Hello, I'm Nina Hossein. Just how damaging has the past few days been for the Met? First, the allegations undercover officers spied on Stephen Lawrence's family after their son was murdered. Now, new allegations that undercover teams also infiltrated groups trying to expose police corruption and racism. One of those groups today said the allegations have the appearance of a continuation of institutional racism. With more, he's our senior correspondent, Ron K. Phillips. He started one of the first high-profile race monitoring groups in the country and acted as the coordinator of the Stephen Lawrence campaign for six years. Seen here with the family in 1995, Shirish Grover admits to being shocked at the allegations of a smear campaign, but in retrospect believes it may have begun shortly after the visit by Nelson Mandela. The first time that the police got worried about possible public and press scrutiny of their motives, I think it intensified just before the private prosecution a year later. And then I think as we came nearer the inquiry, it intensified again. The revelations are deeply shocking and frightening. Uh, this isn't a campaign that has any violent intentions. It's not a campaign that um, is even trying to develop police reform from the outside. It's simply asking a question from the police. Uh, why aren't you investigating a murder? Former officer Peter Francis claims he worked undercover gathering intelligence to smear the Lawrences and their supporters attending anti-racist marches and rallies. The new monitoring project which represented victims of police misconduct was one of the groups said to be indirectly targeted by the squad he worked for. At the moment, the, you know, the appearance of attempting to infiltrate anti-racist organisations and deaths in custody family campaigns, it's, it has the appearance of a continuation of institutionalised racism and there's really very little other to conclude. Stephen Lawrence was stabbed to death in an unprovoked racist attack in April 1993. His brother Stuart, who was 16 at the time, remembers feeling his phone was being tapped, but never having any concrete proof. Phone calls between certain people was never... I was never able to have a phone call between myself and Elvin, who's one of my brother's best friends. We never seemed to be able to have a complete phone call without hearing something or that call being cut off and then not being able to get back in contact with each other. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The Home Secretary told the Commons the claims will be looked at by two existing inquiries, but Neville Lawrence believes this will not uncover the truth. His calls for a judicial investigation led to this response from the Mayor. I certainly think that the arguments for a judge-led inquiry are powerful and interesting. We need to, to look at those. There are also counter-arguments. It's totally despicable. I think everybody's been very shocked by the idea that the police could kind of mount a barrage of uh, denigration, deprecation of people who were campaigning for justice. The claims of police dirty tricks has once again put the Lawrence family in the spotlight, just at a point when they had started to move on. I really would just like to, you know, put this chapter of my life behind me so that we can move forward and, and start to talk about more positive things that we're trying to do as a trust and as an organisation uh, since this tragedy has happened to my brother. Ronke Phillips, ITV News. Joanne McCartney is chair of the Police and Crime Committee on the London Assembly and I'm pleased to say that she joins me now. As we come on air tonight, new reports that Dwayne Brooks, the friend, of course, that was with Stephen Lawrence the night he died, that he was bugged when talking to his lawyers, allegations once again. How damaging is this series of allegations day by day we're, we're learning more to the Met? I think it's extremely damaging. The police, of course, can only um, have a confidence in the public if they are seen and are actually policing as well, because they police in our name. And day after day, we've had yet more serious allegations. And to be honest with you, they are appalling, but I think all of us are now, you know, are we shocked anymore? Mm. And the concern is, are there more things to come? You know, and I think we are at a stage now where we do need to say we do need a judge-led inquiry and we need to get everything out in the open. Lots, and lots of calls for that, most famously, yes. of course, from Neville Lawrence himself. Mm. The government so far is saying it's sticking to the inquiries that are ongoing and adding these allegations to that. That doesn't give a quick fix to either the Lawrence family, who've already been through so much, mm -hmm. but either to, to Londoners. So, so where is the pressure going to come from 
to, to change that and get an investigation quickly to investigate these allegations? Well, of course, the inquiries at the moment are actually taking place behind closed doors as well. And I think to retain the trust and to see that actually justice is done, we need to see an inquiry in the public. And actually, I'm quite disappointed in the mayor today that he hedged his bet saying he could see um, both sides for different inquiries. But actually, you know, he's in charge. He has oversight of a metropolitan police and he could lead the way and he should be offering that leadership today. Does it matter that these allegations are historic or do you think that people learning of these allegations will believe that this type of thing, perhaps in, in a lesser extent, perhaps not, it, is still going on now, that, that victims of crime, very high-profile victims of, of crime, were themselves allegedly being investigated? Well, of course, some of the issues are historic, but actually, if you take the case of Mark Kennedy, for example, he was operating just a few years ago. Um, and I think we need to see that reassurance. And part of the first step in reassuring the public is to have that um, inquiry into what's gone wrong in the past. But we need that assurance because, you know, there are undercover police officers doing a very worthwhile job at the moment. And they must be feeling extremely let down at the moment. You, you mentioned criticism of the mayor there, but politicians of all flavours from all mm. parties, home secretaries, past and present, also the Met Commissioner, now the, the Met Commissioner at the time, all condoning, uh, condemning the, the allegations as, as despicable. And yet nobody is, is saying that they're going to take responsibility or, or even to, to investigate. No, but of course the Mayor is the police and crime commissioner, if you like, for London. And so he can offer that leadership. And I noticed today that the Met Commissioner actually said that if there was a full-scale inquiry that the Met would actually cooperate. So it doesn't seem that there's any reluctance on the police to do that. And if one is set up, they will cooperate with it. And I think that's what we need. We need the public to be reassured that the police's data and information is opened up to full scrutiny. Okay, Joanna McCartney, thank you very much for coming in to talk to me. Thank, thank you. you.